of the Gods, based on the book of 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 1, through chapter 19, verse 18. Many years pass. Solomon's kingdom is divided into Israel and Judah. For 40 years, each king is more evil than the one before him. Then King Ahab and his wife Jezebel come to the throne, and they are even worse. After three years of drought, God tells the prophet Elijah to come out of hiding so that the rains may come again. When Ahab hears Elijah is back, the king wastes no time in galloping off to confront Elijah. Troublemaker! You are the one who has made the trouble, O king. You broke God's commandments and worshiped Baal. You want me to end the drought? Send for all the prophets of Baal, gather the people of Israel, and then meet me on Mount Carmel. Ahab is happy with this proposition, since Mount Carmel is considered the sacred dwelling of Baal. He brings all the prophets of Baal, 450 of them, to meet Elijah, and thousands of Israelites follow them to see what will happen. The morning dawns on a great crowd gathered on the mountain by the sea. People of Israel, how long will you limp back and forth between the Lord and Baal? If Baal is God, worship him. If the Lord is God, worship him and him only. Today, you must choose. We shall have a contest. Bring two bulls. Give one to Baal's prophets and one to me. Let them make an offering and call on the name of their God. I will call on the name of the Lord. The God who answers with fire is the real God. Oh, and I'll let them go first. The crowd reacts with awe at this test, knowing that if Elijah loses, Ahab will condemn him to death. The prophets of Baal are forced to accept the challenge. With great ceremony, they prepare the altar in sacrifice and begin to chant and call upon their god. The prophets chant prayers to Baal from morning until noon. But there is no voice. There is no one to answer. Call a little louder. Perhaps Baal is deep in thought and can't hear you. Or maybe he's in the bathroom, or sleeping. In response, the prophets chant themselves into a frenzy. For three more hours, they dance around the altar frantically, even cutting themselves, hoping to get a reaction from their god. But there is no voice. There is no one to answer. There is no god paying attention to them. Finally, after a full day of trying, the exhausted prophets of Baal give up. Now it is Elijah's turn. As the daylight dwindles, he calls the people of Israel to come near. Then he takes 12 stones, one for each tribe of Israel, and uses them to rebuild an altar to God. When the altar is finished, Elijah digs a deep trench around it, what is he doing? I don't know. Elijah puts the bowl for the offering on top of the altar and then orders men to pour water over it. Pour on more water. Fill the trench. Then, before the water-soaked altar, as the sun is setting over the Mediterranean Sea, Elijah prays. Hear me, O Lord. Let it be known today that you are God in Israel. Answer me, Lord, so these people will know you again and turn their hearts back to you. Instantly, lightning strikes out of the cloudless sky and burns up not only the sacrifice, but the stones of the altar and every drop of water in the trench. The Lord is God! When the people see God's power, they turn angrily against the frightened prophets of Baal. The Lord! He is God! The prophets of Baal are false! They killed the prophets of God! They should be put to death! Look! 
Just as God has promised, a cloud to bring the rain. That's it? Suddenly, the tiny cloud gives way to a huge downpour. Within moments, everyone is drenched. King Ahab falls to the ground in shock. Get up, King Ahab. The Lord has shown himself again in this land. This is a reign of repentance to renew and purify God's land and his people. Now you had better get in your chariot and head back to Jezebel before the parched ground becomes too muddy for your wheels. As Ahab spurs on his horses, God gives Elijah the strength to outrun even the king's chariot. This lets Elijah get back to town first so he can give credit for the rains to the Lord before Ahab has the chance to spread false rumors about the contest. Elijah brings news of the Lord's overwhelming victory at Mount Carmel and the end of the three-year drought. In the homes of Israel, there is joy, thanksgiving, and repentance. Rain at last! Praise the Lord! Yes, it was the Lord who answered with fire. We should never have worshipped Baal. But in the palace, Queen Jezebel is furious. When the people saw the fire from God, they turned on the prophets of Baal and killed them. Elijah... The prophets are dead? So help me, gods, if by this time tomorrow, Elijah is not the same. For years, Elijah has trusted the Lord in every circumstance. But when he hears of Jezebel's death threat, fear and despair overtake him. I must flee far, far away into Judah, but the desert. Even Jezebel won't find me there. But Elijah doesn't want to be a prophet anymore. He goes to confront God at Sinai, the same mountain where Moses talked to God. It takes Elijah 40 days to get there. At the mountain, he climbs the slope to a cave. I will wait here until God sees fit to answer me. What are you doing here, Elijah? I have zealously defended you, Lord, but it hasn't made any difference. Come see me at the mouth of the cave. A powerful wind tears apart the mountainside. But God is not in the wind. Then an earthquake shakes apart the rocks. But God is not in the earthquake. Then lightning splits the sky into a thousand pieces. But God is not in the lightning. And after the storm subsides, comes the sound of sheer silence. The gentle whisper of the Lord asks Elijah again. What are you doing here, Elijah? Lord, the people of Israel don't serve you. They worship idols. They have killed all the other prophets. I, I alone am left. And now they want to kill me. You are not alone. I have kept a remnant in Israel, several thousand strong, who have never bowed to Baal. And I will bring forth those who will help forward my plan to ease your burden. Go to the foreign country of Aram and anoint Hazael to be their next king. Then go find Jehu, a captain in Israel's army. He shall be the next king after Ahab. Finally, seek out a young man working in his fields. His name is Elisha, and he shall walk in your footsteps and be my next prophet.